this is music and this is another first impressions video Welcome to another first impressions video. In these videos, I share with you my first impressions of all the CDs I tend to blind buy. I have this stack of first impressions, so let's just get down to business. Up first, we have this one here, Ferrum by Distillery. This is it's probably best described as some kind of traditional heavy metal with some power metal leanings it's very melodic but also very energetic and there is a considerable influence from iron maiden on this one in particular like you know 2000s iron maiden the vocalist sounds a lot like 2000s bruce dickinson so there's a considerable iron maiden uh, influence but it's it's its own thing i would say and i think it's actually very good i really enjoyed this just you know melodic but still energetic traditional metal still power metal without the cheese and that is a big positive factor to me so check this out if that is your cup of tea up next too many skeletons by dresden and reign of terror the dark lords also by dresden and this is it's kind of it's a compilation of those two albums and um, dresden are described as a kind of a speed metal band very often but to my ears they sound more like a almost like a punk band a hardcore punk band that have uh, included lots of kind of thrash and speed metal elements into their sound but so to me it's actually kind of a crossover band more so than just a speed metal band at least these two releases here and <clears throat> so we're treated to uh, aggressive energetic uh, punk metal um, and it's really enjoyable uh, <clears throat> There is uh, even a cover version of The Sound of Silence on this one, which is an interesting cover version. It starts out being a bit more mellow, and I actually don't like that part, but then it kicks into being a punky version of it, and that sounds like it could be a complete disaster, but I actually find that quite entertaining. But yeah, uh, if you like your crossover, check this one out, and of course, also this one. Up next, we will slow down a bit now. Early Moods, Spellbound, uh, Japanese um, Doom Metal. Uh, it's just an EP with five tracks on it. Um, this is it's almost like a Japanese updated uh, Black Sabbath. They're very Sabbath inspired. But again, at the end of the day, they are their own thing. But you have lots of Sabbath-esque... Uh, riffs on here there might be a slight stoner uh, edge to it as well but it's not again to my ears all out stoner metal it is more like old school doom metal hard rock to my ears uh, with some up tempo parts every now and then so again if you like if you like your sabbath if you like your doom metal if you like your kind of like old school early proto metal as well check out early moods spellbound it's good stuff uh, the next one is neighbor hell by eldritch this is it's a kind of power thrash i would say but it's it's a very modern kind of power thrash it has lots of really cool riffs uh and very well composed songs but it has this modern edge, which I think means that some people might not dig this. If you're more of an old school metal fan, you might not dig this. But if you're more of a into the sort of more new uh, or more recent styles of metal, I think this will be right up your alley. It, it's really like a combination. It does kind of have some 
old school elements as well and then some some more recent stuff i I've, i really enjoy this um uh, the vocalist has this more modern sound to his voice and i think the vocals might put off some old school metal fans but i like this uh, album uh, the hype sticker says melodic power thrash a mixture of aggressive and progressive parts i think i think that makes a whole lot of sense that progressive a bit there um comprising uh, genuine killer riffs uh, and unforgettable melodies fabulously played atmospheric heavy metal way beyond all cliches and trends a timeless masterpiece of metal so they're kind of branding this also as being you know not your old school typical stuff um, so there you go i enjoyed it for sure up next we're going back to japan this is celestial uh nocturne by eleanor looks like this like this this is as like i said it's japanese metal this is gothic metal and uh it's very much in the vein of uh, the gathering when they had that kind of doomy gothic uh couple of albums they did um in a way this is kind of like because the gathering they veered off into another direction this is probably what the gathering would have sounded like ish had they continued down the gothic road and this is very good uh it's female fronted uh they have uh, a lady singing who sings with a uh actually at a quite low register and she has a quite uh uh shall we say uh fast vibrating vibrato uh singing style um think Edith Piaf, but not that exaggerated. Uh, and there is a there is kind of like a feel of of um, of of this, yeah, kind of French uh, absinthe era. Uh, they do kind of like belly dancing, and they have like gala dresses and and things like that on. Uh, see if, if we can find a photo of the band uh in here i think there is yeah here right so you can see the image here that pretty much reflects the music so you have got like long flowing dresses you got a gala dress you got dudes with with guy liners and all that stuff uh so it is in that very kind of gothic vein but it's it's very good i really like this band it's it's very melodic it's very lush uh but it's still very gothic and i, I like the the um original voice that the the singer has it goes very well with this music so if you like your gothic metal if you like your melodic metal and if you're interested in a japanese take on that check this one out it's actually great uh, i know it's probably not for everyone but if again if you like your melodic stuff that should be right up your alley up next sad iron um this is obviously not the way that the cd came it did come in a digi pack which i do have stored somewhere safely this is uh 80s metal it's very energetic it's very rough around the edges uh, some of the lyrics come across a bit questionable but there could be different reasons for that um the music is actually very good i really like it it's it's like 80s metal before 80s metal became polished you know what i mean so it has a raw edge to it it has high energy the guitar tone is a bit uh it's not crisp and clean it's a, a bit fuzzy uh, and uh, the vocals are not clean either they're a bit shouty so it's actually pretty good uh, I haven't explored the lyrics yet, so I don't know if there's anything questionable questionable about them. But there were some things that sounded a bit uh, okay. That's interesting. But if you like your 80s metal before 80s metal became polished, check out Sad Iron. Uh, I'm not going to comment on their band name, though. Uh, up next kind of a mini album here sandstorms uh time to strike just six tracks on this 
this is uh, it's kind of kind of re retro metal, so it's kind of '80s traditional metal, but it's played with a guitar tone that is more '70s hard rock, and not the fuzzy kind, but the more twangy kind. Uh, they also released, uh, I think there was an EP or a mini album too, called uh, Desert Warrior. And I, I, it has to be said that I think Desert Warrior is much better than this one, but this one is still great. Uh, old school heavy metal, very melodic, old school riffage uh, with a twangy guitar, um, and it is great. But I just think the songs on Desert Warrior are better. But if you like Desert Warrior, I think you will like this one too. Uh, so do check it out. I, I really enjoy this one. Up next, Satan's Wrath. This is uh, this is kind of a blend of, again, traditional 80s-ish metal uh, with speed metal and thrash metal. So some of the songs are very just heavy metal like and some of the songs are thrashy and speedy uh, they have this kind of satanic thing going on and that is very entertaining it has to be said um, and the thing that kind of really kind of hooked me in here is is uh, the energy the aggression but also you got some surprisingly melodic parts that just kick in so that's very well balanced i think so uh, Satan's Wrath, speed metal with some m melody to it. Um, the next one is kind of weird, Descent from Darkness by Centuria. Um, it looks like it's a CDR, um, and I think maybe it's kind of a demo thing. And the back cover is has some song titles in uh, Spanish. Um, because it's the wrong back cover that came with it when I bought it, but I paid next to nothing for it, so I don't care. But it is Centuria, and it is, uh, what did I call it? Descent from Darkness. And this is modern death thrash. So uh, it's kind of like modern thrash metal, but not the kind of thrash metal that's in right now which is very retro uh, and traditionalist this is kind of the the style of thrash metal that was in in the 2000s although i'm actually not sure this is from the 2000s uh, but that style of thrash metal which had, had a modern sound and which did not look that much back to to uh, old school thrash metal uh, and then you have harsh vocals uh, which are kind of like borderline deathy uh, and then you have some elements from uh, Swedish melodic death metal as well. So, so it's that sort of death thrash. And I, I'm sure it will not appeal to everyone. Uh, but if you were into that, or if you are, because it's still around, obviously, into melodic death metal and you know more modern thrash metal, uh, I think you will enjoy this one. I quite liked it, to be honest. So there you go. The next one is, it's n actually not a first impressions, but it was somehow ended up in that pile. So why not Sepultura, uh, Morbid Visions. And it's the uh, version that also comes with Bestial Devastation. Now, uh, early Sepultura, uh, that's almost more like... Um, yeah, I mean, it's thrash metal, but it's very inspired by kind of like first wave, you know, black metal, which is was pretty much just a, a more raw and primitive kind of thrash metal. And that's what you get here. And the first couple of Sepultura releases are infamous for being sloppy and badly produced and all that stuff. But I actually don't think it's that bad, to be honest. Uh, yeah, sure enough, on uh, Morbid Visions, the guitars, you can hear it, are kind of out of tune. Um, and uh, the drumming is, you know, can't really keep up with the rest of the uh, songs. Which is interesting, given that Igor Cavalera is one of the technically most proficient drummers around now. But you have to start somewhere. But it's not as bad as people kind of say it is. 
Uh, the songs are well composed, they're energetic, there's some very cool riffs there. Um, so it's actually better than people, I mean, people, a lot of people love this, but they love it for being sloppy and all that stuff. But it, I think it's, it's better than people make it out to be in that department. It's not super sloppy, it's not a disaster, uh, I would say. So yeah, but early Sepultura, if you want to hear, if you haven't heard it yet, if you want to hear the roots of this band, check out Morbid Visions, Bestial Devastation, and of course also Schizophrenia. And up last, the third Japanese um, uh, album in this bunch, Into the Storm by Significant Point. Awesome cover art there. Uh, and this is... This is a blend of speed metal and traditional metal, and it's really good. I really enjoy this. Uh, you have some really tasty and very impressive guitar work going on. You have old school heavy metal riffage. You have your speed metal drumming. Um, the vocals are very much in the um, Bow Wow loudness school. And in a way, this is kind of like an updated modern uh, version of Bow Wow and uh, Loudness. And that can only be good, right? So, significant point. Again, Into the Storm. Awesome. Metal. Speed metal. Traditional metal. So, this was a bit of a stack of CDs. A lot of first impressions. But fortunately to me, at least, they were all good. And... I would certainly recommend that you check some of these out if they sound like uh, they could be interesting to you. They were interesting to me. I enjoyed them for sure. Thanks for watching.